Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I'm Candace Bradbury Carlin, director of the Tilton Library. Thank you all for joining us today for this milestone event. Woo! As Ellen S. Billings, former Tilton librarian, wrote in the 1946 annual report to the town of Deerfield, a small library needs the help and cooperation of everyone to make it a success. The day has finally come, after so many years of hard work, to make the official start of construction in order to improve and expand our beloved library to be even better. Our heartfelt thanks to the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners for joining us in this vision for an expanded Tilton Library. I want to send a special thank you to Sarah Woodbury, who's here today. Sarah was my predecessor as library director here at Tilton, and she was the pioneer of this project. It has been my honor, Sarah, to take the torch from you almost six years ago. Thank you to Nancy Maynard, Satu Zoller, and all of the trustees. You are the best partners in this journey. You're always there and always believing. Thank you to the friends of Tilton Library. You've been our cheerleaders and supporters all the way. Thank you. Thank you, dear Tilton Library staff, past and present, for being the best possible staff with which to, to bring this ship to our hope, hopeful future. And finally, thank you to the town of Deerfield and our many donors who made such great effort to get this project off the ground. Deerfield's future library will retain the best uses of the past and the most needed additions for our future so our community can thrive. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Candace. Um, I'm Satu Zoller. I'm chair of the board of trustees of the Tilton Library, and I've been on the board of trustees for many years, and also chair of the building committee. And I'm proud to say I've been on this journey from the beginning along with many of these familiar faces here. And first, I just want to say I love how many people showed up, and I just want to say we love libraries, right? That's why we're here. So I just wanted to give a brief history of our journey. Uh, in 2014, we were awarded a planning and design grant from the MBLC that Candace mentioned. And a group of us, including Candace, uh, Judy Holmes, who's also here today, uh, myself, and others that I don't know if they're here, um, we we're part of a needs assessment committee. So we traveled throughout the valley, visited other libraries that received grants, took learnings from different places, thought about what we wanted our library to be and to look like. We did more research, we hired a project manager, and then in 2017 we, re we received a uh, notice that we did receive the award. So we're very thrilled, we began moving forward, and then of course COVID hit. So after some delays and some stress, many stresses, uh, we were finally officially awarded the, the grant in 2022. The citizens of our town in October town meeting that year voted overwhelmingly to provide additional financial support to the library, which was followed in December by an official town vote. As Candace remarked upon, it takes a village to build a library, or in this case, to expand one. The library project has, from the beginning, been about, by, and for the community. We gathered input from and shared project ideas with Deerfield residents all along the way. And we've been buoyed by the support we've received from the community. We really could not have done it without the great citizens of this town. So thank you all. I do have some special thank yous today and I hope we don't miss anyone because as I said, there were so many people involved. Um, but first of all, the trustees, past and present, have been really you know, the most <laughs> solid group of, of dedicated True Blue supporters. Uh, so I want to name those who are here today. Beth Schmidt, <laughs> Marjorie Hutter is here I saw, um, Nancy Maynard of course, Jim Cambius, Kathy Overwork, and Cindy Von Fladrin who couldn't be here today because she had to be at a wedding in France, poor thing. So <laughs> but I know she's here in spirit. I also want to thank the building committee, which is made up of volunteer citizens who are committed to building the best library efficiently and cost effectively. 
So I'm also going to name those folks. So Julie Chalfant, <laughs> Vern Harrington, who's here, Denise Mason, who's also here, um, Judy Holmes again, <laughs> Candace, of course, and Tim Hilchey. And Ava Tor, who was on the committee for a good deal of time and, and had to take a break. So, of course, I'll thank the friends Candace already did because without them, you know, they're, they're our lifeblood as well. I also want to thank our select board members, Trevor McDaniel, who I don't believe is here today, Tim Hilchey. I want to give a special thank you to Carolyn Ness for all her support of the library. <laughs> And I also want to say a special thank you for all your hours of commitment and love and service to this town. Yes. And Blake Gilmore, who was recently elected, welcome to the party. <laughs> We're very happy to have you, and I would be happy to meet with you anytime to tell you about the library or any questions you might have. A special thanks to Dan Pallotta, who's our project manager, and his team. Dan? <laughs> I don't know if he made it here yet. <laughs> Um, he's been with us since the beginning in the planning and design phase, and I really think his confidence has given us confidence that we can really pretty much do anything. So I want to also thank Phil O'Brien, our architect. Phil is here too. So I grew up with a father who was a general contractor, and I was pretty much told not to trust architects. But <laughs> Phil, you have taught me that architects do listen and you made it really fun to be part of a team, um, the building committee, that is developing a vision and thinking creatively of what we want our library to be. So thank you very much uh, to Phil and his team. And finally, a huge, huge heartfelt thank you to Candace Bradbury Carlin, our director. <laughs> I know, I don't know if you knew how much you were taking on when you came on as director, but actually I do know that you knew because you were part of the planning process. <laughs> Um, thanks for your energy, your humor, your commitment to Tilton, and above all, your love of libraries and your belief in what they can be for a community. We appreciate it. Woo! <laughs> and finally, thanks to Leo's Table for donating the wonderful treats and the coffee, and please help yourselves. So now we're going to move on to the speakers. So first, I'd like to introduce Nancy Maynard, who's chair of our uh, Tilton Capital Campaign and has been a long-term Tilton trustee. Thanks. Well, it's really great to be here. It's an honor and privilege to finally get to this portion of the project. I've been a trustee for 23 years, and I am chair of the Tilton Fund, which is the fundraising arm of the program. Um, so we have been busy. Our capital campaign has gone on and on and on, it seems, but we're finally getting to the place where we want it to be. Um, so we wanted to today to recognize some of our very early donors because that's what really spearheaded our campaign. Um, the trustees made a commitment early on to raise $2 million towards the cost of the project. And as you all know, the cost of the project evolved over time because of COVID. Um, so first we want to recognize um, the Savage family. We have Alice Savage and her daughter Anne here today. And <laughs> so they were one of the very first donors and our very first um, group of people that became, um, uh, took on the naming opportunity. And they are going to be naming the teen room. And the teen room is so important because up until now it's been this tiny little closet. <laughs> So I have um, a comment from Cindy von Fladern, who's in Paris, um, because she was once a student of Joseph Savage Sr., and she had some remarks that she wanted to share. I knew Mr. Savage because he was my English teacher and later my guidance counselor from grades 7 to 12 at nearby Smith Academy in Hatfield. When I began there in seventh grade, he had been teaching for quite a few years and had a reputation of being strict but beloved teacher. He taught kids English at such a crucial time in their education. He taught the basics, grammar, punctuation, spelling, and composition, how to write a beautiful sentence, paragraph, and essay. There were weekly vocabulary tests which required a lot of studying. I also remember reading many reading assignments. 
He instilled a fascination with Greek and Roman mythology and a love of literature. These were the building blocks for kids to become competent writers and critical thinkers. For me, personally, I'm quite certain that I would not have become a legal writer without English education I received from Mr. Savage. Once kids in the younger grades could show Mr. Savage that they were working hard in their studies, he would loosen up his stern demeanor. In those days, kids went outside after lunch. I remember Mr. Savage enjoying the downtime with his students. He had a quick and dry wit. He liked to share some information about his family. We loved to hear about his seven kids, and I remember their names to this day. The oldest was Joe who was 16 when I was in middle school, and his two youngest daughters, Anne and Mo, were very young. Later, Mr. Savage became the guidance counselor at the high school, where he continued to support kids and help shape their paths. He also served on the Deerfield School Committee for many years. I think it is fair to say that all the students that passed through Hatfields Halls respected him for his intellect and his passion for education. For these reasons, it's fitting that the teen room at our Tilton Library be named in Joseph's Savage Senior's memory. So, thank you. And we're sorry, Joe Jr. is in Africa, so he couldn't be with us today. So at that same time, we had four other major donors that came forward, and we want to recognize them today as well. Marianne and Richard Barnes, and Marianne was a long-term uh, Tilton trustee. Gordon and Pam Oaks, and Pam is here today, and she was a long-term trustee. <laughs> Ann Barker um, is here supporting the pledge that her parents made, Charles and Betty Barker. <laughs> and then my mom, Betty O'Dell, who was a friend of the library. <laughs> We were very fortunate in the early stages of the campaign that all of the trustees and all of the staff were committed to making pledges, and that continues to this day. Um, to this day, we have ra uh, raised um, $1.1 million of our $2 million goal. Uh, we're currently working to solicit individuals and family units and businesses to get the rest of our, our commitment for the town, and we're very confident that that will happen soon. Um, so we thank you all for your continued interest. This wonderful attention to us today is just great. Uh, libraries are integral to our communities and essential for the town of Deerfield, and you've all shown that. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nancy. And now I'd like to introduce uh, select person Tim Hilchey. <laughs> so, dear Tilton family members and fellow bookworms, we're gathered today to take part in a time-honored and aptly named tradition for what could be more worthy of a groundbreaking than creating a Tilton Library for the next 100 years. Many of my earliest, most memorable reading adventures took place in a library. I fell down a rabbit hole. I slipped through a wardrobe into a land where animals talk. I glimpsed the left hand of darkness. I learned about Pride and Prejudice. The authors of these adventures, Lewis Carroll, C.S. Lewis, Ursula K. Le Guin, and Jane Austen have become lifelong companions. Today we acknowledge the hard work and dedication of countless people, past and present, who have brought us to this moment. In addition to the Tilton trustees, friends, donors, and staff members, I'd like to express gratitude to several people who've made significant contributions along the way. First, I'd like to thank Carolyn Shores Ness, my, my predecessor as select board chair, whose vision of a walkable town campus is now becoming a reality. <laughs> this campus is centered around an expanded Tilton Library, a senior community center in the 1821 church building behind us, uh, the new town offices that are planned for the 1888 former grammar school building that's beyond the church, and new subsidized senior housing. When we dip our shovels into the ground today, we'll take part in this effort. 
Next, I would like to acknowledge our dynamic duo, State Senator Joe Comerford and State Representative Natalie Blay. who along with Congressman Jim McGovern and his team were the earliest and strongest supporters of our campus vision. So thank you. When the COVID pandemic drove library construction costs through the roof, Senator Comerford and Representative Blay partnered with Deerfield, Amherst, and several other libraries facing sticker shock. Working together over several months, we reached an unprecedented agreement with the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners that provided more money for our projects. In Deerfield's case, the MVLC pledged an additional $470,000 in funding, and we are very grateful for this outcome. I would like to thank Candace Bradbury Carlin, Satu Zoller, and Nancy Maynard, and indeed the entire Tilton family of volunteers past and present for allowing me to play a small part in this endeavor. And on a personal note, I wanna thank my wife, Pat Ryan, for her gen generosity and her support for an often absent husband. <laughs> now it is my distinct honor and great pleasure to invite Representative Natalie Blay to celebrate with us today. Well, it is wonderful to be here with you today as part of this dynamic duo with Senator Comerford. I am truly honored to be able to do this work with her every single day. Uh, and for us to be a part of this community, to have the honor of representing all of you on Beacon Hill. So it is really, truly an honor. And I, as I was looking at the history of this project, I took a look at the website and the very first thing, and I don't know who is responsible for this, but it's brilliant. Community building happens in a community building. That is... <laughs> of course it was Candace. Uh, but good things take time. And this community has thoughtfully pursued this project since 2009. With the select board commitment and MBLC funding, it was full steam ahead until those cost overruns came in. Uh, and Joe and I were very happy to work with a tremendous you know, select board and Tilton family to advocate alongside so many other libraries who are facing a similar challenge to get some additional state funding to make sure that this project moved forward on time. You know, recently I had the opportunity to visit the Sunderland Public Library. We have Aaron Fauvel here from the Sunderland Public Library, and you're here too, right? Works here too. Um, it was their 20th anniversary, and they were celebrating a move from the Graves Library, which is a beautiful building, much like the one we see behind us. But the fact of the matter is that that investment changed the future of that community. <laughs> that thank you, <laughs> Julie. <laughs> it tremendously improved the offerings for community members, and I have no doubt that it will do the same right here in Deerfield. I know there have been a lot of thanks today, but I do just want to also thank the MBLC, Candace, and your incredible team the library trustees, the building committee, the Tilton Fund, town administration for so many years. Uh, and want to echo thanks to Carolyn who has served this community so incredibly well for so very long. And also celebrate and welcome Blake to the select board and know you'll be a tremendous partner going forward. But really we have to thank this community who believed in this project and stepped up time and again to support it along the way. You know, we know that libraries 
are the heartbeats of our community. And the heartbeat of this community is beating really, really strong today. And I'm grateful to be a resident of Deerfield. I'm going to be getting online to donate today. If you haven't donated, make sure that you do. And thank you all for being here today. Good morning. It is an honor uh, to be here with you at this really glorious celebration on a glorious day. Uh, and I want to just echo, uh, you know, Tim, it's lovely for you to call out the partnership uh, with Natalie. It is absolutely what makes the work we do in the legislature possible. I know we both believe it, right? We are stronger when we are together with each other, which we are, thank, thank goodness and with this beautiful town. And I want to say ditto to everything Natalie said, so I'll just add some new thoughts, which is Deerfield is singular among the towns that we work for. You are special. You are dedicated. You are unique. You are sharp as a razor in terms of your vision. You are generous. You are bold. You are uncompromising, which is good. Uh, you are tireless. And you are on the move to make sure that Massachusetts is a better place for all communities, all communities. Uh, and you are leading the regional equity work that Natalie and I do together. You plant a stake in the ground and you say, no, we want it fair, fair for Western Massachusetts. And that means fair for Deerfield, but it also means fair for every other community that's rural like Deerfield. And I think that's very, very important to call out. Um, I also want to just thank, very much thank the MBLC. What Natalie talked about in terms of the, the additional funding that MBLC worked with the legislature to achieve is unprecedented. It has never happened before. Uh, I hope it happens in the future, but it has <laughs> never <laughs> happened before. Uh, and that is because, as Natalie said, Deerfield joined with Amherst and we pushed east together uh, and, and jo joined hands with many, many other municipalities facing these same overages. And our good friends at MBLC opened their hearts and opened their minds. And then together with the legislature, we were able to find a way forward uh, that was pretty gutsy on the part of MBLC uh, because, in fact, we were setting a new direction, a responsiveness in a way that I know that MBLC fought hard uh, to discern. And in the end, I am very glad for the additional funding for the projects like Deerfield, like Amherst, and others across the com Commonwealth to recognize the necessity of these great equalizers, right? Libraries, these great democracy builders, these great launching pads of opportunity, of adventure, of, of, of ways that we can become more of who we dream of being. And I echo all the stories of what libraries meant to me as a kid uh, and now me as an adult with my own children. Uh, so I join the thanks that have been said for the incredible people who have made this possible for so long and the array of stakeholders from the donors to the trustees to the staff and of course the town administration um, and the select board. And Carolyn, I add my own gratitude to you um, and it is important that we celebrate you today. Uh, and just I join with you in being excited about today and so looking forward to stepping across the threshold um, in this walkable campus that Deerfield is envisioning and calling us to. Yeah. 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 And aren't we lucky to have such amazing legislators supporting us here in Western Massachusetts? Yeah. And Joe, thank you so much for your kind words about Deerfield, but I bet you say that to all the towns. <laughs> <laughs> and Natalie, we will be looking out for your donation and other donations as well. We're really trying to get to that two million, so every penny helps. Every dollar, actually. Pennies don't. <laughs> so next on our agenda, we have Kobe Gardner-Levine, who's the regional manager for Congressman Jim McGovern. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Um, and just to start off, I, I, I want to pick up on something that Natalie and Joe just said about making sure that we here in Western Massachusetts and specifically here in Deerfield um, get our fair share. And I just want to add something to those remarks, which is that it makes it a lot easier when you have two state legislators like Natalie and Joe leading the charge. Yeah. 
I also just want to start by echoing the thanks that we've heard from uh, folks here today to the trustees, to the electeds, um, to the community partners, the donors, and certainly to Candice um, and, and the entire team. So let's hear another round of applause for all of them. So this work is done um, in partnership with, with all of you. And uh, on behalf of Congressman McGovern, I just want to say thank you to, to everyone here for all of your support for this project. Uh, this library really speaks to the power of community. And it's often said that libraries are the cornerstones of their communities. And I think we really do see that here. Uh, this is a place that's going to nurture and develop Deerfield and the surrounding area of Western Massachusetts um, for, for decades to come. And uh, young people and adults are going to learn so much from the books and the other resources available right here. Um, and we've seen and heard about all of the hard work that went into the library to even get us to this point today. And the reality is that this wouldn't have been successful if the community wasn't behind it. And uh, I know I'm speaking for all of us here when I say that we really value and cherish this library and will do so um, for the years to come. And in addition to the books um, and other resources, uh, like the computers here, are, are incredibly valuable to so many people in our community. And I think that's maybe something we don't think about as much as we should. Um, in our office, in, in Congressman McGovern's office, we see folks all the time who don't have a computer. And they, and they come in and they tell us that uh, they were able to fill out their applications to receive Veterans Affairs or Social Security benefits um, or, or other basic necessities like applying for jobs because they were able to go down to their local public library and use the computers and other resources there and that when they did that they were able to speak uh, with folks um, again like Candace and her team who were able to actually answer those questions and, and kind of give that human component um, that that is often needed and so that that's something that seems so simple when you think about it but it really makes uh, a life-altering difference to many people in our community um, and this expansion is also going to provide so much more in terms of the services that the library can provide and especially when we're talking about the expanded uh, teen and children's rooms and the other meeting spaces that we heard about. Uh, and so finally, I just want to say how grateful I am to Candace and to the other hardworking um, librarians and staff who make this place truly special, um, who make this not only a place to read, but also a pillar of our community, because that's the true power of a library is that no matter who you are, that you can access these resources. And it's really remarkable what's available here. And I believe that libraries open information, facilitate gathering, and enrich communities. And I think we need that now more than ever. Um, and Deerfield deserves the, this gem that we're here to celebrate today as a community. And this takes us that next step into the future. And I'm so glad to be a part of it. So once again, thank you to everyone for everything you've done to bring us here to this point today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kobe, and thank you to Congressman McGovern for all of his support as well. So now, uh, our final speaker this morning is Karen Traub with the Mass Board of Library Commissioners. Karen is a library commissioner, and they have been obviously what has made you know, this entire project possible. So thank you, Karen. Good morning, and I want to give a special shout out to the Weather Committee for doing such a good job this morning. On behalf of the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, it is my pleasure to offer a hearty congratulations to the people of Deerfield on this momentous day. Nothing makes the MBLC happier than helping libraries grow and meet the needs of their communities. And I can't help but think that Chauncey and Arabella Tilton would also be <laughs> delighted. When it comes to libraries, Massachusetts has long been a leader in the nation with the first public library, 1778, the first library commission, 1890, and the first public library construction program which since 1987 has helped over 250 municipalities to expand or build new buildings. The Mass Public Library Construction Program is a model for other states and continues to evolve to meet the needs of the 351 cities and towns in the Commonwealth. MBLC's uh, library building consultant, Andrea Bono Bunker, is here today somewhere. Where are you? And if you want to learn more about the program, you can uh, talk to Andrea. 
Um, on March 1st of this year, Governor Healy filed the Mass Leads Bill, which includes $150 million for the MBLC's public library construction program. Deerfield is so lucky to have amazing legislators like Senator Joe Comerford and Representative Natalie Blay, who are not just library supporters, but fierce library advocates. <laughs> And please let them know with a phone call, an email, in person, or a letter, how much you appreciate their support of libraries. Tell them what the new library will mean to you and your family, and ask them to support Bond Bill H4459. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Nicely done. As a library enthusiast myself, it's been my pleasure to visit new libraries across the state. Uh, Greenfield, most recently. Yeah. And I know you are going to love the expanded children's room, the large meeting room, areas for quiet study, the business center. And you won't believe the good that can come from teens having their own dedicated space in the library and out of that closet. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, so last year, the Surgeon General declared a national pandemic of loneliness associated with an increased risk in cardiovascular disease, dementia, stroke, depre depression, anxiety, and premature death. And guess who on this very day is breaking ground for the antidote to loneliness? <laughs> Deerfield, yeah. yeah. A library is more than a building. It's a wondrous and magical place where people can come together to have fun, to learn, and grow. UNESCO, in the Library Manifesto, proclaims its belief in the library as a living force for education, culture, and information, and as an essential agent for fostering peace and spiritual welfare through the minds of men and women. By the will of the people, today we celebrate this milestone and recognize the hard work and dedication of so many. To every one of you who, over the past 15 years, has contributed your time, talent, and treasure, let it be known that today's groundbreaking is a historic event and an extraordinary investment in the future. Look around at this amazing and beautiful crowd of library champions. Candace, the trustees, friends, building committee, donors, library users, town officials, and our amazing legislat legislators, the dynamic duo, I'll have to use that in the future. <laughs> Look around at the smiles, say thank you, Good work. And once again, I wish you the best of luck. I say congratulations, and I can't wait to see you on the day of the grand opening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. And I love that antidote to loneliness. That's fantastic. And I get so excited thinking about all the different uses of this new library. It's really not about just, I love books, but it's not just books anymore. It's about coming together, like Andrea said, community building, working together, fun children's activities. I mean, I could go on and on, but we've done enough of that, probably. So now we're going to get to the official groundbreaking ceremonies. Um, I wish everyone could hold a shovel because this is really a community effort, but we don't have that many shovels. So what we decided to do was ask the trustees and then the folks who spoke today to come up um, and put on a hard hat and grab a shovel and we'll get a photo up. But thank you everyone for coming and we can't wait to see you in the new library. <laughs>